Hi everyone, uh, I'm Charles Watson, and this is my senior project, How to Build a Solar Powered Computer. Um, so, I just wanted to give everyone a bit of information about why I chose to do this project. Um, it's a way to provide computers and internet access to people who otherwise would not be able to use them. Um, so I did two things. First, I researched uh, what parts to get, where to get them, how much they cost. Then I ordered the parts and then I built the computer. Then the second part of the project was making the computer run on a battery, a car battery, that could be powered using sunlight, using the solar panel. So I also want to teach people how to build these computers if you wanted to build one uh, on your own, by yourself. That's just like this. Okay. So does anyone in this room not have a computer? Um, I can think of three reasons why people, maybe, who want computers don't have one in their homes. Uh, pro prohibitive, prohibitively high cost, uh, lack of access to electricity, and availability of parts. Um, so there have been a number of projects in recent years which have tried to give more computers to people. Things like the one laptop per child, uh, which, you, which is about $100 per computer. Um, but problems with there are a number of problems with these programs. For example, the one laptop per child uses custom hardware, so it's not as available as a computer like this, which is built using mass-produced hardware that anyone can buy. Um, secondly, I want to devise, devise a good use for solar power, because if you think about maybe a light bulb, a uh, 125 watt light bulb, using this solar panel, it would take 25 hours to power that light bulb for one hour. So it's going to take a while until solar power is to the, the point where it can maybe run an entire city, uh, city's electrical grid. Um, but this is a much more specialized usage for solar power. Uh, so it's a much more ideal application than just trying to run your house on a very expensive uh, method of generating electricity. So, uh, our computer lab upstairs uses Dell E733C CRT monitors and Dell Octoplex GX620 computers. Um, now each monitor takes about 70 watts and each computer takes about 130 watts. So this is about 200 watts per computer. There are 26 computers, meaning that throughout the day when all those computers are on, that's 5 kilowatts of power, which is a lot of energy. Um, so I looked at ways to make these wasteful computers a lot more efficient of the picture. Uh, so research. I felt that the like the standard computer that I was trying to beat was the computer that we have in the computer lab. It was kind of average. It seems like the kind of computer that most people have in their homes. Um, so I researched some newer technology which can help save more energy. Things like SSDs, solid state drives. This is one right here. Um, it's running the computer, whereas with a hard drive, what you have is a platter, a magnetic platter, which spins very quickly, and it, it has a head which reads all the information. One of these has no moving parts, so it saves, uh, whereas this takes about 15 watts, this only takes 2 watts. So there are some, some ways where you can save a lot of energy using new technology. Uh, I also used an Intel Atom processor, which is newer and requires much less energy than a conventional processor. So then what I did was I bought the parts. I used Newegg.com, which only ships to the US, unfortunately, uh, for my main order to get most of the hardware you see here. And then for everything else, I went to the Wan Chai Computer Center. Uh, the next step was, of course, installing everything, installing all the parts because uh, it's really not as hard as it seems, and I'd like to teach everyone how to do it themselves. So I just want to say that the best mentor you could have these days is the internet. Whenever I ran into a problem, it was just a few minutes of Googling, and you can find the answer. If you can't find an answer, you can always register on a forum and ask yourself, and they might be able to help you.
So, uh, what do you actually need to buy a com uh, to build a computer? All the parts you can see right here. This is uh, the way they came when I ordered them on the internet, and this is as you see them here today, not installed. Now, because we only have a, uh, a few minutes um, to do these presentations today, I can't go th step through step on how to build your own computer, but I did come up with this list of parts which you can access online. If you want to build a computer that's just like this, it's 200 US dollars, which is very cheap compared to many computers you'll buy from a company such as Dell or IBM. Um, and if you have any questions afterwards, we can talk about it. But pretty much uh, what you need to do to install is that this green device right here, right up, is the motherboard. And it manages communications between the different devices. So there are two real ways of installing something onto the motherboard. You either plug it directly in or connect it by a cable. So when if you were if you were to buy these parts and you wanted to make your own, the manuals would kind of tell you everything you need to do. So once you've installed the parts, plug in the computer, troubleshoot along the way if you need to. Uh, like I said, it's it, uh, we don't have enough time to go step by step through building a computer, but if you have any questions, you can ask. All right. So I wanted to talk about the really hard part. A lot of people have built their own computers. It's pretty easy to do, but I found that running it on solar panel, uh, solar power, was the hardest aspect. Um, you have a number of problems. For example, there's direct current, which is from the solar panel to the battery, the battery is direct current, whereas the wall's uh, outlet, the plug that you plug into a wall, is alternating current, which means that the power supply is designed for alternating current. Um, solar panels won't work during the night, obviously, uh, so I needed to weigh a way to run the, the computer at night, and a 30 watt solar panel is very expensive, and I didn't have enough money to buy one just for the same projects. Also, I knew very little about electricity when I was starting this project, as anyone in my physics class will know. Um, so I had to learn quite a lot to do this project. Okay, so the mentor is our driver. He's been with our family for like seven years. He knows way more about electricity than I do. So he and I worked together um, to build this computer. and. He kind of always had a solution to everything, which is really good. So what we came up with was this 5 watt solar panel, which was left over from a previous project, a car battery, um, which will be powered by the solar power uh, panel to run during nighttime, during the night, and what's called a inverter, which is this thing right here. It uh, converts the DC current into an AC source of electricity so I could run the computer because even though it's coming from the battery, the inverter makes it seem like it's just wall power so the computer can run. Uh, so the process is a solar panel charges a battery, the battery is fed through an inverter and the inverter converts it to uh, AC so that the power supply can convert it to uh, electricity that the parts need. Uh, another uh, reason we chose the car battery is that if it's an emergency and you need to use uh, maybe the internet to get communication out to friends and family, you can use a, a standard car battery or you can put the car battery in a, uh, in a car and run the car and the car's alternator will charge the battery so that you can use it even, even if the battery is discharged and you're all out of solar. Maybe it's nice. So, power usage. Uh, school computers, as I mentioned, use 126 watts. And one watt is a volt times an amp. Our battery was 12 volts at 17 amp hours. What this means is that it can, apply, can supply 17 amps at 12 volts for one hour. Um, so 17 amps at 12 volts is 204 watts. So we could run that for one hour. Uh, and our, this computer uses 
31 watts when it's running fully, when the processor is at 100% load. Um, so using this car battery to, to power it, we would need 2.5 amps, which equals 31 watts, which means our battery can last for seven hours without uh, solar, solar panel, panel charging it, which is 17 amp hours divided by 2.5. So uh, along the way, I did notice some things that weren't really going well with this project. Which so I came up with some thing, uh, some ways to improve. Uh, the computer uses 31 watts, which is very power efficient as compared to what's in the computer lab. But newer models use only 18 watts, and they're a lot faster. So they're much more power efficient than the ones we have than the one I have here. Um, so we could upgrade, just use newer technology and use ele less electricity and get a faster speed. Also, uh, we could remove the DC to AC to DC conversion and just run the computer using DC power. Um, and we could build a case for the computer, as you can see. It's just wires strewn everywhere. Uh, if you were to build a case, it would just be a much more manageable device. And set up circuitry to check how much battery life is left and find a suitable LCD screen for the computer. Okay, so I have some demos to show you, just to show the capabilities of this computer. We have, let's check the audio. Um, this computer is capable of uh, most things that you'd expect of just any modern computer. It can play uh, high definition video, so we have the trailer to Star Trek and like a little wildlife movie, which I'd like to show. So even though the computer is very cheap, it can still play uh, movies which are very large, which require a lot of speed.
Does anyone have any questions?